no more or more add to that. We not the same lines too because a man a man out there with us a wait. But Graham Smog and same as Fellow and a wait for to go back. But Graham Smog and a talk about. Morgan Heritage, big gram Morgan. I'm still going to wait for the tour. Pandemic. Pandemic is not supposed to affect Morgan Heritage, not gram Morgan. Right. So, what, what, what do you have to say about that? <laughs> First of all, when no five man them, I want to share with you this. I'm glad you said that. Some things when me hear a road about me and my brother, they make me laugh. Man, say, yeah, man, I saw it go. This, the amount of fictitious things that surround Rastafari, it needs to change. And if we don't change, we're going to lay back and see this world advance without us. I was still in the end yeah, I and I started, you know, we are the original, you know, while we are suffering. And the fact is, my brother, is that we have bills too. We have desires too. We love woman too. You say you're young and fresh and no man the woman them. I love you half. I say, yeah, I look like a young raster. If I catch him, you see. So the reality is that we all face normal things. And some of the man them, them like to get in such a heights and become this rich. And the reality is that we have bills because no matter where you live in the world, if you don't pay your light, they're going to shut it off. If you don't pay, pay, put my gas in the car, the car, the car, the car is not going to move. So the reality is that no matter what, even if me sit down pan one billion dollars, me still have to move and me still have to get up, me still have to go to the bathroom. The things of life and the responsibilities of life still face us. And one of the biggest things that me says, enough man now make no baby again, like no man no want no family again. And the woman them no have no baby again. The first thing is, is you know whatever their thing is but let's show you from my perspective from where i'm coming from but the first thing that we wanted to do is say boy well have a look at you to know you mean a blessing you, know? you want to see your offspring and now today's generation is like they're not interested in that they, they more find success important than having a family and it's been that way for a very long time but some people want to have the success before having a family and a lot of people want to have a family in order to push them towards success. So everybody to each his own. But the reality is that grams have bills. <laughs> and this pandemic has been rough. So we, we, we find a way to become a cre creative. I've been studying cryptocurrencies. I've been studying the stock market. Because they now left Rasta out of the thing. I will not have it. I'm not going to sit there and, them, and hear a lot of man say, why repatriation to Africa? Number one, it take a flight. I would love, I would love to even fly on my own plane because Marcus Garvey teach us about, about, about um self reliance and building ourselves as a nation, as the black nation, and we can't then and and see these things happening and want them to happen by just dreaming and having good words. It's going to take work, research, knowledge wisdom or we're going to sit there and have the longest dreadlocks and the biggest khaki khaki slash suit and red gold and green and watch these things happen me grams morgan it not happen they're going to tired to see with face like the gang said and and fire i got a quick question right your pops was a blood and fire person right where did the practicality the practical approach come from compared to i don't want to say uh uh I don't know the term to use, but as you said, people, they are on a certain heights where they're kind of disconnected from mm. the environment that they have to survive in. So where did a practical approach come from and how have people responded to your practical approach? Oh, it's been tremendous. It's been tremendous. Me and a lot of my Rasta Bridges say, yo, I didn't think I would need to talk about because it's time to start having sober conversations or we will see generation after generation after generation after generation, come and do the same thing. So my father's biggest thing is say, you don't have to go to school and come. My father dropped out of school in the fourth grade. You can imagine that. And my father learned to read, read by reading the daily news in New York, by the guard store and buy a hot chocolate and a, a, a butter roll. Man, I know about them Brooklyn living there. That was my breakfast when man, I, I survive and I sell ganja and I, and I make life. And then just come a foreign. And 
him sit down with the newspaper on the toilet and teach himself how to read. Now, when you get that, that a man say, when you listen to your band and say, send him back to my yard. If you know that tune there, and a man say, a man they are foreign and a loaf and the next man they back at Jamaica, all he wants is the chance we're going to make it a foreign. So my father reach America, him first thing when he send for him wife and him first three kids them and bring them to America was education. Because this is one of the things that many other generations or many other um, nationalities have over us is that we don't take education serious. Marcus Garvey talk about these things. His, His Imperial Majesty talk about these things. So that is the difference with I say with my father. Him say, yo, go to school. There was many times when we did it and we, we had to travel between New York and Massachusetts. God, we grew up between them two places. There. And the culture strong. See? And I remember reach from New York to Springfield, Massachusetts. A man up on a yarn and a pan. No one go to school, daddy. He said, get up and go to school. I we tired enough, just leave 12 tribes. I grew up in 12 tribes by Israel. So we'd have to go there and rehearse. And we was the backing man for people like Judah Merrills and, and, and um, Judy Mowat, Sister Kara. We were the backing band. So we were so tired that by the time we reached the Springfield, you know, it was like 7 o'clock. And the bus comes 7 30 and would leave out of the van in the driveway and go right to this to the bus bus stop for that school. So I then where me come up with that mental toughness. So when my father say, yo, when me know my father left school at fourth grade, kind of a babysit female look better them. You think me can come play? Me have to supply myself with every tool mentally physically, spiritually fit. That was that was for mother, me and my brother then. Mentally, physically, spiritually fit. Mentally, spiritually. It, it was a thing where we just say, yo, we have to make sure we fit. So no football, no soccer, no basketball. Because I said, man, you can't ramp and you can't tie up on stage. You know? So it was a thing where, and if you follow this, the ones that are successful in the music, it's the same mentality. Buju Bantan, Kipotan, being a man is the same kind of thing. Being a man not exercise enough still. You just start exercise right there. But it's the same mentality where you look at Marley's, the man takes football serious and then get it from where? Them father. So that's why you see that sense of, of, of militancy is in is, is in the music. Yes. And, it, and there you said that now it, it, it lead me if it, if it mention a thing to come. I listen to the reasoning and it'll go one direction where you feel like so most times the, there's a generational gap where, where the, the disconnect is there between the elders and the young youth. Because they talk about the informal life father and the formal aspect of the education. How we can improve the gap, the, the wide, wide gap the way there. So youth can get it and say, all right, see the elders them there, see the example here, yeah. see the future there, make us set the pace there. How do one them say that inside the music and outside the music to become realize it in the music the gap is wide because the criticism are from all different angles is wide. Very outside wide. Is wider. <sighs> yeah. I think I think the craft of music. This is great conversation. This is how it's going to change, you know. It's having sober conversations like this. Sober conversations like this. No. When you talk about the the gap and all, it, it is it is so important at this point for us to have these sober conversations because when I went and sit down and sat with the great Martin Moore that met his imperial majesty in the flesh, me never meet his majesty yet. I don't think you did ban when Majesty come at Jamaica neither. Cause you look young. Unless me don't know how we are taking your shop or some organic place. I huh? don't know. But I think you're young. So, yes, <laughs> so when me did and go visit them man there, and the man they look pan we and when, when the man see me in a purse, the man choked man and said, Jo! The man was so happy to see us. And at one time we get to meet him now. 
And the man, the man said to me, just stay up and work. The only thing that him said to me, I met about me, my father, my brother, Raswita, Bongo Nati, um, Ras, Ras Kasha. Him some, this are some elders that I have been given. Elders who we not travel with. And the man said, tell the man them to put in the bingy drumming of the music. Cause you have to have the timbrels. Cause you know the elder them call the timbrels the timbrels. Enough man don't know what the timbrels is. And you have to study them thing there in the blood. And one thing he said to him, said, doi, 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 doi. And we said, what, what do it? He said, him did not see enough Rasta man talk, 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 talk over the years and have so much fire in them and at the end of the day, they have accomplished nothing. And him said, don't be like them. When, when Ross, hey, when, when Martin were trying to talk, you know, the great <laughs> Kumi. <laughs> like a lion and a man. The man is like the room shaking up. And the man said, don't, when, when he said, um, don't get caught up in the sense of doing peer talking and don't do nothing for Rasta. You know what I mean by this something for Rasta? Is showing them a way. Because if you, if you talk, me talk it all the time with my little friend of me in Nashville, you know, and then understand the Rastafarian culture. First of all, let me make something very clear. Rastafari is not a religion. It is a movement. It is an awakening movement, a liberating movement that many people has turned into a religion. And then I saw it go. The foundation of it is based on the Ethiopian Orthodox Catholic Church from Ethiopia, connected in Egypt, Alexandria. So if we want to get the research, it is, a, it is a liberation movement. And the nucleus of that, it has a spiritual nucleus in it. It have a, you understand? The, within the Rastafari movement, there's a spiritual nucleus. Where even the drumming, the drumming don't come, that drumming don't come from Jamaica, it come from Uganda. <laughs> that Naya Bingi drum there, that drumming come from Africa, specifically Uganda. No few of them don't know what I just said to you. What I just said to you, enough young Rasta you, they don't know. Because a lot of them is leaning upon a thing named zeal. When they put on a CIA and then put on a red, gold, and green suit and then put on a natty dread, that's how we say you don't have to dread for the Rasta. I we needed young and I grew up as a young youth. My father allowed me to, to, to find it for myself that when we find the Ethiopian Orthodox Church in Jamaica and I set a youth named Black Lion in Jamaica and I start learning about certain names, we'll let the Selassie and Ailey Malakat and I said, but wait, them names are different. And this are years after me grew up in a 12 tribe without my Nati Dread. Because when me don't know about his majesty, me not about dreadlocks. So that's why the message they come in, come out away and say, because we live it as, as a testimony from we when we say, you don't have to dread to be Rasta. But then I listen to the verse. We say, what does it mean to be Rasta? It say, it's a light of validity, live by the fathers of our history. Got to believe in his majesty. What about his majesty? Oh, yes, his lineage and divinity. The first step is sovereignty. No, enough man don't even know what sovereignty means, which is one of the seven seals of his majesty. You ask enough Rasta, you know, what are the seven seals? When I say his majesty lose the seven seals in the earth, so that's your, what are those seven seals? Enough of them can tell you if the. Brother, if we have this conversation with enough you, they will be lost in transition. So like I say again, Rasta, if you see his imperial majesty, you have to see the church, Ethiopian Orthodox Church, because it, it is connected. That is the nucleus of Rastafarianism. If you're dealing with what the king deal with, and that is the reality. So these, them conversations are very important. It feel nice for the man in your mind. 
I I is a is a funny thing there, sir. So matter of fact, large up the youth them in a in a Kabele, in a Kabale, Uganda same way. What are the yes. youth them to from Kampala to Kabele car? Well if I really youth for them. That's right, the right, that's so the right, the right, that's another zone. I'm used to call it Kigazia. Yeah. That's so the zone where the Naya being the sound come from. Some good, youth, some good youth come from around it, you know? Yeah, but, man. But, 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 but more I ask their question to call for years no more I ask their question from me, you know. From my youth and I learned about far right movement. You see, they yeah. don't have a dread to be Rasta. I yeah. feel like it have whole heap of different meditation to me, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. But enough ones, I feel like it's a scapegoat terminology for enough yes. ones. Yes. And, and, and that would I want to clear up, clear up for, for me, please. Because enough ones say, oh, don't have a dread to be Rasta. So they use it as an excuse. All right. Yeah. One's not over said, identity is dear with the locks to show a form of resistance and rebellion. And also, you have to have a different type of liberty. So you can't just say, oh, yeah, man, we are dealing with goodness and we love Rastafari. Okay, my mama got narrated. So, okay, every man, you know, I tell you this straight for years. A lot of man do wrongs. I use Marga narrative as a reference. So, yeah. mother love for the eye now directly come yeah. clear that up because a long time I tell Liza from you, who asked that with the specific yeah. one, you know. Mother <laughs> love for the eye come clear it up because a lot of man need to stop the wrongs. And then say, you're Morgan heritage, say, you don't have to dread to be Rasta. So, how oh, they can put a clarity upon that to show them, say, when well, we talk about this, we talk about a, a divine liberty, a liberty where a man has to live and uh, upright. You can't just, just throw up Morgan heritage, don't have to dread to be Rasta whenever you feel like you had the wrong, and yet still you want to still come in. Yes. Truth about that is the ones who do that, they don't know themselves. Still. Because for them to use it as a reference to defend wrong, you're wrong. <laughs> right? You can it's like you say, boy, you do some kind of wrong, and you say, ooh, me never knew a star. You, I mean, it's, it's, that's what basically what you're doing. And if you hear we say, you don't have a dread to be Rasta, it's a testimony of us, right? And where we live and see is that no youth, no, 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 no youth have on dreadlocks and have no liberty. And also, there are other people on that walk in our walks of life and have dreadlocks on their head, and it has nothing to do with his imperial majesty. It has nothing to do with their identity. We know that believe in the Solomonic dynasty and live by that and study the king. This is our identity. You dig? This is our identity where we use. But in this day and time, you cannot use that alone to be your identity. It has to come with a liberty. Oh, you live, it has to be the reflection of our king, Emperor Eilis Selassie I. It has to be the reflection of that, of the Solomon dynasty. It has to identify with that. So that's why from my new album is like those positive vibration, many other times with politics, and it's about life life itself it's not about when you, you want to hear about um rastafari teachings a, a 12 album magnetic put out and a three soul album he put out you know so these are like books so when you want to go for them you gotta listen to the album like more teachings when we are talking about the fit and the kebra and the gas you gotta listen to them album there you go listen don't have to dread you gotta listen mission in progress I'm going to say, why should we trust in politicians? But how oh, long, at the end of the day, this is a, a, a business. This is art. So when me then am I, I think that Rastafarians, that we put so much of our spiritual views and energy in the music that sometimes we forget about the music business. And remember, I said, reggae is that nucleus. They were, at this, so we put out a message them, Panana. So it has to be maintained. And I said, dilute the thing. But at the end of the day, this is music business. But when you talk about the message and the music, that cannot change. That's why on a Morgan Heritage album, you have to find a love song. Because we love women. I don't know no other people who love women like Rasta. Me don't know. Sometimes we have two and three wives. Me grew up and see two mother. So if you want to talk about woman, my father grew up, me born and come see two mother. So we love women. So that's why I'm saying, she's still loving me. Through all the trials and pain, uh, it's, it's a reality of our life. But so if I'm gonna come now and say, why well, I'm kill a man on my table, so you don't have to get your brass. No bother with that. Crucify him. Then man, if you get judgment. 
So it have nothing to do with Morgan Heritage, say why you don't have to do You don't have to be dread to be rest out was a saying that was to free and liberate many young youth who work at the bank or them father never want them or the man never want to put on dreadlocks. So he could wait till him reach the age of 18 or 21. And when he feel he left him house and move out, he put on him natty because that's what theme spirit tell him to do. So it was to free people like that. It was to free the man or the young lady that working in the bank and she loves some Sisla Kalanji music and love Bob Marley music and love Morgan Heritage music. But she's afraid to put her locks in her ear. Miss enough look a young girl in a Kingston. Them love Rasta so much. Them just put on one look of locks in the box. You ever see them? You ever see them just put one look of dreadlocks in the box? And then when they got, got to work, they must wrap it up and say, Yeah, so we in a disguise from them. And she's cute and look nice and working at the bank. But she a Rasta woman. So it was a thing that was to set a lot of young Look at youth will love Rastafari movement, love the culture, without keep them in a bandage. You know, see, because we want them to know say is is bigger than just idol eating. Enough man, we see have hundred lakhs and they are Muslim. Mr. Enough man have hundred lakhs and they don't agree with certain things where where where, where the Rasta man say no for them a murderer, no for thief. So you can't just use that and look at the man and say, oh, he's a Rastafarian. And I saw it go. There are many wolves in sheep clothing, but by the fruit you shall know them. Well, let me hear you say, my.